today's episode of Juicing the Numbers, uh, a statistics in sports podcast. I'm your co-host, Joshua Tracy. And I am Corwin Heller. And uh, Corwin, what are we talking about today? We're talking about defensive football stats. That's right. It's our, it's our final of the, of the uh, three categories for football stats we, we had brought up much earlier on in the run of the show. We did uh, quarterbacks, we did offense, and now it comes to defense and maybe a touch of special teams, maybe like a nah, little bit. Fuck them. I fuck mean, them. I'm, I might bring it up a little bit. I don't think there's much to say, but I might just throw them in there since it's it's a unit. Um, so I pulled up a link for uh, one of the pages on Football Reference, which I'll include. Are in we the starting with uh, individual stats or team stats? Oh, that's a good question. I did pull up some individual players. Do you want to do them first? Uh, I mean, we've done everything else starting with individuals, so might as well. Okay. Um, I mean, there's not too I, many to talk about. No, I pulled up uh, Lawrence Taylor and Darrell Revis myself. All right, I'll pull those up. You want to start with Lawrence Taylor? Yeah, let's start with Lawrence Taylor. He's kind of good. Yeah, I also pulled up Night Train Lane, but that's just because I love his nickname and wanted to learn more about him. <laughs> um, so, we got Lawrence Taylor. Uh, he played... Every game at right outside linebacker for the New York Giants. Um, first thing, I mean, there's really not a lot here. Um, I, I guess football reference keeps defensive players relatively simple. Um, it might also be because this was like 40 years ago. No, 25. 1981. Well, it ends in 93, though, so you'd think that if there's additional categories, they would have added them in. Mm. Kind of like what they did with Jerry Rice. Yeah, I guess so. Let me just try out someone newer, like Von Miller. Okay. Uh, Durrell has a lot captured in his, though. There's a lot more for Von Miller. Is there really? I'll pull yeah. it on. I mean, nothing too outrageous. It's kind of just a lot of like turnover stuff, but they have sacks, solo, assisted... Combo, tackles for loss, QB hits, all that junk. That's that's way more. All right, we'll go with Von Miller. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Von's middle name is Bouvachon. B, capital B, apostrophe, capital V, lowercase S-E-A-N. I really wish this was a video podcast so we could see this. <laughs> see our that's reactions to like seeing this for the bullshit. first time. That's, that's, the, oh, God, Vaughn, what? The, all right, all right, that's, no matter what stat we're about to look at, that's the most shocking thing for my day. Booba Sean, oh, God. All right, anyway. um, oh, Jesus. So, first thing that we have in Von Miller's page is sacks. So, so Von Miller, defensive end, right? Yep. Linebacker. Left outside linebacker. How's that different from defensive end? Um, so in a 3-4 defense, there's three defensive linemen, one nose tackle, and two defensive ends. And then there's four linebackers, including two outside linebackers. In a 3-4, the outside linebackers are the majority pass rushers. Where, as in a 4-3, 4-3 defensive ends are the majority pass rushers. So it basically just comes down to whether or not you play with your hand in the dirt or whether you're rushing standing up. You see, this is where Corwin's uh, going to have it. I I'm fine with numbers <laughs> and how you get from one place to the next. I'm good with baseball. My knowledge of, like, X's and O's football is not not present at all. I'm going to um, ditch Josh and start a terrible X's and O's football podcast that even less people would listen to. Uh, it's going to be hard to it accomplish that. It would be really bad. Thing. Yeah, it would be really bad. Uh. All right, so Von Miller, the first thing... Oh, sorry, I just had to scroll down a bit. My bad. So the first thing I need, uh, I'm need, i looking at is um, defensive interceptions, with the first one being, well, I guess it's all just one long thing for one category. So Von Miller had one interception last year. Uh, or this year. Do you care about this from this position? No. Interceptions yeah. for linemen? Not really. That's kind of more like luck. 
Yeah, it's nothing I really care about too much. Um, I mean, being able to get your hands up is something I value, but it's getting an interception is way just too improbable. It's just straight up chance. What about um passes defended? Um, that one's gonna be hard depending on the position. So like as an outside linebacker, especially one of Vaughn's caliber, he's not gonna be defending many tight ends or whatnot. I mean, he shows that he can do it, but it's not something I really care about. Okay. I wish they had, um, like, tipped passes, you know, something like that. Could show the hands going up. Um, I'm not sure that would be a that big be number a for Von defended. Miller either, but but I don't think it – I think it, it, you're not defending a – I think what they're – let me rephrase. I think what they're getting at with passes defended is you're in coverage. Yes. Uh, I'd like to see it from like you know because your your defensive linemen they're going to be shoving their hands up all over the place. I'd love to see uh, that kind of shit, but that's okay. Um, I really don't care about interceptions for Von Miller nor passes defended. Uh, the next yeah. one I have interest in forced, forced fumbles. fumbles what do you think? It's one of those things where I like to see that he's able to consistently force them i mean he has multiple in all but one season with a high of six in 2012 um it's nothing so it's nothing that makes or breaks a player it's just a little bit of icing on top of the cake you know yeah yeah i'd i'd say this is um this is a great bonus stat uh, this shows clear skill. Uh, if you can be do it consistently, it shows that you you have a decent football IQ too, because you have to know to go after not just the ball carrier, but the ball with your hands, your head, or what have you. Um, but yeah, I I if my defensive end or I guess the uh, I guess Von Miller is a linebacker, and I didn't was just not aware. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there weren't like a bunch, I don't think I'd be concerned as long as the, uh, I guess other, uh, more important counting stats were there. But this is definitely a, a really great bonus, a really great a- mm-hmm. a- additional thing to just sep- uh, something that's going to separate your really solid defensive ends from your really great defensive ends, or linebackers if you're Von Miller. I guess I keep thinking he's not one. You look confused. Yeah, I was just looking to see if I could find a different stat that I wanted to talk about, but it doesn't look like any of the major sites list it, which is disappointing. What's, I was going to look up uh, QB pressures. Mm. So you can find quite easily how many times a specific quarterback is pressured, but not from the defensive point of view. Uh, that might be more of a unit than it would be a, a per player. Right, so like there's ones for units that don't really go in depth. Um, it says, well, Pro Football Focus says that they have them, but that's two hundred dollars. I don't want to spend on a podcast. I am not making any money from. It's okay. We're just gonna move on. <laughs> uh, number of times fumbled, bo- fumbled, both lost and recovered by own team. Okay, so I'm more annoyed Von that Miller, you brought this up and are forcing me to talk about it than it I, being. We listed. don't have to. I mean, it's all zeros. I'm not quite sure why it matters. Uh, fumbles recovered is random. I don't care. Yards, I don't care. I actually don't Here care about go, any though. of the rest of those. Um, sacks. Bing, bing, bing. I'm sorry. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Is I'm it is. smart. I know what words are. Um. Sacks Tell huge. me about sacks. How um, how many are you looking for um, to call someone um, upper upper echelon for for their position? Um, for edge rushers, which are three four outside linebackers and four three defensive ends, I'm looking for at least ten. Ten would kind of be the bottom level of what I would consider top edge rushing talent for your team. Um, I mean, 
top guys in the league should probably be getting 16 plus. Um, that's probably even a little high. Um, probably like 14 and up, I would say, for top tier in the NFL. Um, for defensive tackles like Aaron Donald, who is the best defensive tackle I've ever seen, um, you want to get probably at least five or six. Yeah, that's one of the things that, and, and as I just said, I'm not much of an X's and O's guy, so I'm really not going to be all too present in the non-numerical um, parts of this conversation. But that is something that bothers me when you see a lot of people talk about, like, uh, Snacks Harrison when he was on the Jets. Ah, dude, mm-hmm. never gets never gets sacks. He's not fucking there to get sacks. He's right. If he gets a sack, that means the offensive line fucked up way more than <laughs> Snacks Harrison did something right. Like it, it, it's um, but yeah, no, I, I I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I think the record is twenty two and a half, right? Twenty two and a half. Michael Strahan, Aaron Donald, which I maintain so is bullshit. Yeah, they I, gave it I, to him. I, that is, is that. a hill I will die on that Mark Astino should still mm-hmm. have the record because the Jets need something, man. <laughs> that was one of the few things we had, man. Also, Joe Jesus Klecko Christ. should be in the Hall of Fame. Anyway. Aaron, I just want to say Aaron Donald had 20 and a half sacks this year as a defensive tackle, so which is nearly impossible. So the big yeah. thing, the big difference between edge rushers and defensive tackles is when you are pass rushing from a uh, interior defensive line position, um, you are able to be double teamed consistently. So usually a, a tackle and a guard or a guard and a center or a tackle and a tight end, you are able to get to the quarterback much quicker if you have a clean release as a defensive tackle just because it's a shorter distance, Pythagorean theorem, simple stuff. Um, But you do have to go through a lot more bodies to do so, which is why it's so hard for defensive tackles to be able to provide consistent pressure on the quarterback. So getting 20 and a half sacks and being too short of the NFL record as a defensive tackle is enough to warrant Aaron Donald being in the MVP conversation for the NFL this year. Rant over. Um, so you said like 14 sacks for a defensive end or outside linebacker in a three, four, which is something I just learned. Um, and like five for a defensive tackle, uh, five for a you... defensive tackle to be like a good defensive, like a good pass rushing defensive tackle, um, 10 or more for edge rushers. 14 would be right. like top tier in the NFL overall. Okay. What about um, – I know this doesn't happen much, but, but kind of – I know that they do send um, strong safeties. Do you, is it something you – we can get there when we talk about safeties, but is, is there right. a number it you really, really care about there? That's really not a position that you can look at a sack number and say, hey, this guy's really great. I mean, certain safeties excel when they're operating in the box and are able to um, – kind of play the line and beat tight ends and able to get pressure consistently, but that's so much reliant on the system that they play in and what their coaches ask of them. So Did I mean, you compare it? Oh, sorry, sorry. So like a guy like Harrison Smith or Derwin James this year who are top tier in the NFL at operating in the box are going to get a handful of sacks, but you re- can't really compare them to any other position or – whatnot just because of how random it can be or dependent on what the system is could you compare it then to like sacks being to safeties what forced fumbles were to uh uh defensive ends and outside linebackers kind of like you don't it's not like it's not yeah it's part nice of your job, to have. But like yeah and obviously you're also going to, have to stipulate there it's more likely going to be from your strong safety than your free safety because your free safety is probably mm-hmm. not going up to the line that no. would be insane. Um, all right, but anyway, that's all right. I'm it's it's see. it's kind of similar, but force fumbles are almost completely random. Whereas you can scheme a safety to get a lot of sacks in a season comparatively. Right. I just kind of meant the force way that fumbles you're are gonna, more just like super random. Less so the origin of it. I would I would wait 
sacks by a safety or defensive back a lot heavier than I would forced fumbles just because of how completely random forced fumbles are. That's fair. Um, now we're into tackles. So uh, mm-hmm. they're going to call this combined, so just a total number of tackles, uh, solo plus assists. Um, how do we feel about tackles? Um, it's one of those stats where if you have a lot of them, it could either mean that you're really good or the only good linebacker on your team or your team is so fucking bad that everything is getting through the line. So there's, it's one of those stats where like there's too many outside factors to really judge it consistently, you know? Like oh. Joe Sherbert for Cleveland, who I know I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Sorry, Joe. Had like 130, 140 tackles last year two years ago, whatever it was, led the NFL in tackles. I don't think he was in the top five linebackers in the NFL. I wouldn't even say he's in the top ten. It's just he played for a team that allowed him to have a lot, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, so it's it's a volume conversation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, if, what if you could combine, like, tackles with uh... – you know, QB hits and sacks. If you, well, I guess that really only applies to guys like Von Miller because other people won't be approaching the box as much. Right. So, like when you're looking at like a defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker, what have you, combining those numbers, having all three together is nice. Like I like being able to look at tackles, sacks, tackles for loss, and then QB hits. But we'll get to those other ones. Um, Immediately. And then there's then there's the breakdown between uh, solo tackles and then assists. Um, how, does, does this change your perception of anything? Uh, no. No, it doesn't really. I mean, having a lot of assisted tackles and not a lot of solo tackles might be a red flag, but I wouldn't say it's something to judge a player off of. Yeah, I, I I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think if I can if I can justify viewing one more uh, or less beneficial than the other. I was thinking, I mean, I don't I'm not gonna put any stock behind this, but you can feel free to tell me what you think. That um, solos may be more reflective of skill, whereas assists might be more reflective of scheme, since you have multiple players in the same spot for where the ball carrier is going to although i think that's kind of a stretch i'm just trying to see if there's some way of giving a kind of value to it solos represented that you could actually do the job by yourself whereas assists means that there's at least two people in the area where the ball carrier is or is going to but again i think it's random and that's i'm not presenting this as my my (laughs) formal my formal theory is there anything um, you could think, really, as to why these two I mean, would be viewed greatly differently? Linemen are going to get more assisted tackles just because if a guy's running through an A or B gap, they're running Second into... contact. Yeah, like they're going to run into multiple players doing so. Defensive backs are going to have more solo tackles because no one else is going to be around them for most of the time when they do tackle somebody. Linebackers might have a clear shot through a hole or a gap they might be just dragging them down with a defensive tackle it's a little too random all right yeah i'm, I'm with you i'm I, I tried yep uh this one i like a lot though tackles for loss oh yeah all i right, value this me... almost as much as sacks not quite just because the need to get sacks so much more quickly than a tackle for loss but a tackle for loss still shows that they're able to break free in the backfield and bring down the ball carrier. Almost as valuable as sacks. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You showed all the same proficiency, but maybe you just couldn't, Mm -hmm. you know, a hair of a second later, what have you. Um, I love tackles for loss. I love, Mm -hmm. for one thing, it's a satisfying play to see. If 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 yeah. you're if you're the team on defense, oh, there's nothing, there's nothing like knocking the team back a couple. Great. Um, plus, you get to see some dude just burst through the line. So much fun. 
But in addition to that, it is a, an exceedingly useful stat. This, I, I'd love to see this plus stuff like sacks so that you can get an idea of how often your player is breaking through the line. You know what I mean? Because I think oh, yeah. that's oh, yeah. that in of itself is a skill that that could be captured somehow. I mean, sacks plus tackles for loss. I, I guess we could add it into a, a waiting kind of interest um, scale there a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I could see that. We could play. Maybe I'm just that. O- maybe I'm just overcomplicating it. But you yeah, look like you're going to say bad. something. Yeah, so I will say that defensive tackles are going to have a lot more tackles for loss than sacks just because of when a running back runs up the middle, they're running right into a defensive tackle who is there. Defensive ends aren't in that area. It's just, I'm not really explaining it well, but it's basically just where the running back is usually going to run. Yeah. So if you guys have not seen the Jadavian Clowney hit back when he was playing for South Carolina in the bowl game against Michigan, you are doing yourself a disservice for not going back and watching that play. It is the most just devastating tackle for loss I've ever seen. I won't even describe it because I don't want to ruin be, like seeing it for the first time. It's phenomenal. Dude, you're it. such a savant with this stuff. I can't believe <laughs> the information you keep in your head about this shit. Oh, oh my god. god. It's a shame I fail all my classes. Yeah, it always is. Uh, QB hits? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, basically, yeah. what that shows you is the ability to put pressure on the quarterback, get in the backfield. You know, it doesn't come up on the score sheet as successfully as a sack does, but it's doing nearly as much to the thought process and mental makeup of that quarterback when he doesn't trust his offensive line to keep the pressure away. And you're able to put hits on the quarterback, make him feel that pain, and it's going to slow him down. It's going to make every every sack after that a little bit easier it doesn't get enough justice in the media i think it's been getting slowly more recognized because one of the things one of the i think the most obvious visual things that comes with a qb hit is when the 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 quarterback still gets the ball off but because Mm -hmm. his mechanics were compromised by either the anticipation of the hit or the hit itself the ball ends up really wobbly and can't be caught uh it ends up falling dramatically shorter dramatically um sailing over the wide receiver's head and i think that that obvious visual of qb hit is making recognizing it as as a valuable counting stat to some degree uh more prominent so if you had to let's say we're going to make some kind of like very very basic little deal um here um to grade a defensive player trying to break through the line like i said previously we're going to have sacks we're going to have tackles for loss and we're going to have qb hits sacks is number one which do you put second uh qb hits or tackles for loss i would do sacks tackles for loss qb hits and then quarterback pressures which we haven't talked about previously because we can't find the information for it but pressures same scenarios qb hits does the same it just having a lot of those without a lot of sacks just kind of shows that the pressure's there, the sacks will come in time. But I would put that one at the bottom. I think so too, because I think the thing, the only, I think for me the real difference maker is that tackles for loss has a more immediate effect on the drive you're in because mm-hmm. you are actively losing the um, opposing right. team yards. They and both down. lose downs. They're both unproductive downs, but tackles for loss mm-hmm. has a more immediate effect in yardage. Um, right. After QB hits, they have safeties. I don't give a single fuck. Just completely random and situation-based. Yeah. Um, I also have up Darrell Revis's. It looks exactly the same, but it actually has some fun stuff with interceptions if you wanted to look at it. Yeah, sure. Do you want to look at it? Up. Yeah, All I'll right. bring it up. I can't spell Darrell Revis because my L key doesn't work. Uh, can you do D Revis? No, nah, I just did Revis. Oh, Turns that out there's only one of them. Shocker. Do you have Darrell's thing up? 
I do have Darrell's thing up. Oh, yeah. Darrell's your guy. You can talk about – you started us off with uh, interceptions and whatnot. Darrell is my guy. <laughs> Darrell's my pal. Um, Darrell and I, we have a special bond. T- title of your future movie? Oh, title of your sex tape. I fucking love Darrell Rivas so goddamn much as I look over at my Darrell Rivas jersey and, and love him endlessly. <laughs> um, so I thought Darrell Rivas would be an interesting guy to talk about for two reasons. One, he's going to the Hall of Fame. He was a very, very good cornerback for a long mm. fucking time. He's Excuse okay. me? He's okay. Go fuck, go fuck yourself. <laughs> After he left, uh, you know, New England, he was okay. Yeah, I'd say his 2015 season was all right, and then 2016 was really, really we're not going to talk about 2016, 2017. Those were, those were the dark ages for him. But still, for him to be like a, a really, really, a dominant to, to really solid cornerback for in man coverage for eight years like it's fantastic um because one of the so for one thing great cornerback so he accumulated a good number of counting stats the second thing i want to bring up with him as corwin's making a face and i'm dying to know what it's about is he's going to be a good representative for um advanced stats like qbr2 because the thing Mm -hmm. is after a certain point for cornerbacks, and you're going to see this with Richard Sherman, and you're going to see this with Chad Bailey, and pretty much anyone, quarterbacks are eventually going to kind of stop throwing in their area because why risk it, you know? So there's going to be a lack of stats, and that is also kind of telling when you know something about the player you're talking about. And that's where, like I said, advanced stats like QBR come into place. You see that a lot in colleges, especially guys coming out into the draft, which is why there's a lot of late round cornerbacks that really shoot up in, you know, notoriety once they come to the league. Guys like Richard Sherman, Josh Norman, who may have gone in well, in Sherman's case the sixth round or undrafted like uh Josh Norman. When teams watch film on another team leading up to a game and acknowledge how good a cornerback is in college, you're just not going to test it because it's not worth it because usually the other cornerback's significantly worse and you could just attack them all game. So a lot more cornerbacks go undiscovered or whatnot just because it's hard to get tape on a guy that teams don't throw to. And as much as you could think around it and realize, hey, if teams aren't throwing towards a guy, he must be really good, a lot of NFL teams aren't going to take that kind of chance. So now you made you made a face while I, I was did. talking so in about two, Durrell. In 2009, in Durrell Revis's first All-Pro campaign, he had 31 passes defended. I knew you were going to say this. Which yeah. is outrageous. Yes! Two, averaging two passes defended a game yes! is outrageous. Durrell! That's like, I, I don't know how to put it into words. I definitely don't know how to connect it to words, but like, there's no other stat that I could think of to compare it to. It's wild. It's outrageous. It's and like getting any thirty-one sacks. That's the year the season. Yankees won the World Series. I think not. Darrell no, fuck yourself. Yankees World Series MVP. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Um, no, like it's how it, it his stats here are just outlandish, outlandish at the beginning of his yep. career. I didn't realize um, he had a hundred yard interception return. Yeah, you know what's funny? I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like I started, I really feel like I should. <laughs> I started watching football in roughly two thousand eight, not closely, mind you, but that's when I first started watching. I feel like I was too young to appreciate the skill level of Darrell Revis. Like, even though he played throughout my entire childhood growing up, I have no recollection of him being good until he went to New England. Oh, well, to be fair, that's me with Andy Pettit. Like, I don't remember Andy Pettit much at all. But who cares about Andy Pettit? I fucking love Andy Pettit. (laughs) It's it's funny, because as a kid, I don't think you care about skill. 
skill as much as like persona. Mm-hmm. Because as a kid, I remember Andy Pettit's like, I don't know if anyone here gives a fuck about Andy Pettit, but he'd always have like the the cap real low on his face and the glove real high and just this shroud of darkness. And as he stared at him about it, it was like metal as fuck. And that's what I remember about Andy Pettit. But I don't remember him being good because, I mean, when he went to Houston, I was like nine or or 11, something like that. Like, I was really young. Like, I don't remember m- much of Andy Pettit's career. You, what were you going to say? I just have a super embarrassing story. It's not even that embarrassing. It's just like one of those things I don't need people knowing about. But um, I had a player that I thought was the best player on Penn State's team growing up. I thought he was the coolest guy ever. His name was Anthony Scarato. He was a strong safety for Penn State. He wore number seven, and he had the coolest hair. It was just perfect. And he was, like, fucking handsome and, like, chiseled. And I was like, that guy must be the best football player around like guys don't look like that and are bad at football turns out he was really bad at football who knew never went to the league never did nothing just you know my uh my my lasting memory of of yankees taiwanese pitcher chen men wong literally i thought i (laughs) dreamed him for the longest time because, like, after he left the league, it's like no one talked about him for, like, eight years. The only, the only <laughs> memory I have of Yankees pitch, yeah, Yankees Taiwanese pitcher Chen Min Wong is uh, a scorching linebacker, or uh, uh, comebacker, linebacker, a scorching comebacker right after he had, had thrown the ball, where he, like, ducks down like a squat, turns his back to the batter, and just leaves his glove in the air and catches it like and when he catches it he is facing like second base and crouching in fear and caught it and i remember thinking to myself this guy's the best this guy's so good at baseball <laughs> and like he was but like that's not why <laughs> yeah. i think the first yankees game i ever went to as a kid hideki matsui hit a home run and he did that a lot. I know he wasn't a bad player, but I know we talked about this in the past, but I always thought Hideki Matsui was a Hall of Fame level player, like the best Japanese player of all time. Like he was a god to me. Good player. Not Japanese baseball Jesus. Uh, he was he was like it for Japanese hitting for cuz what's interesting, this is such a side note. I this think is such Ichiro's a tangent. going to come to your house and say We're going to come back. Me. No, hold on, because listen to my point. Japanese baseball is all about singles, bunts, and speed. Um, because there's not a lot of big Japanese dudes. And, and that, mm-hmm. So Hideki Matsui was actually... A, I mean, any baseball player who comes over from the MPB is a big deal for, in Japan anyway, because you're representing your nation. But Hideki Matsui was, was a really big deal because there were... Like, Japanese power hitting is not a thing. So the fact that, like, he was out there doing it, like, he was not Ichiro levels. I'll say, like, I'm not even going to say the peg below just because of how stupid high up Ichiro is on that <laughs> list. But, like, a tier below, like, two tiers below Ichiro. Like, if, if I had a – if you forced me to pick, like, the three most important Japanese ball ballplayers, um, I'd, I'd go Ichiro, uh, Hideo Nomo, and then uh, Hideki Matsui. So high Otani. What? You say something? I only uh, heard Sho- Shohei Otani. Sh- Shohei Otani is going to have to do it for a little bit longer. But th- this can't become baseball. We have so much baseball. So What were we talking about? Darrell Revis. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. So uh, how do you view um, interceptions for cornerbacks now that we're actually talking about a position that interceptions matter? It's going to sound weird to say or to hear, but – it really depends on how the cornerback plays. So guys like Darrell Rivas, who would just sit out on an island and guys wouldn't touch him, or they play a little more press coverage, whatnot, interceptions aren't huge. Um, But guys like, uh, I know I mentioned him in a previous episode, uh, Kyle Fuller, 
for the Bears, who play off ball. They spend the entire game watching the quarterback. They're reading the quarterback. They're there just to jump routes, to break up passes, or go for interceptions. Guys like him, Marcus Peters, that kind of style of play, I'm going to value interceptions a lot more. Because it shows that they can excel while playing that less than a less than not less than just a different style of p- play than what most guys do. Um, I know this is this is a stat that they've been kind of keeping track of now, though I I doubt it's here. And a quick comb over says it's not um, expected interceptions. I know it's kind of a bigger deal for quarterbacks. Right. Um, because it's basically where it's like you hit the the defensive back in a spot where like if that man had hands he could have caught it, but defensive backs don't usually have hands, so he did it's not. Old cliche. If, Would you? If you could catch, you'd play wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something everyone's dad says growing up. <laughs> <laughs> My dad uh, has said that multiple times this season, dude. Like every fucking game, I swear to God. Anyway, it. it is that something you'd see valuable as as the defensive back? Or do you think bit. its value kind of just sticks to being with quarterbacks? I think it sticks with quarterbacks. It's I think so hard too. to judge that for defensive backs. I mean, it's, you're already getting it counted for a pass defended, pass breakup. It's not great. How would you view, um, if I made the comparison, that interceptions are to passes defended the way sacks are to quarterback hits. How would you feel about that statement? It's an accurate statement. Okay, because it was something I was thinking about. about. Yeah, I I, I wasn't... I had had the thought while you were talking, and I wasn't sure. Kind of the same way I was trying to justify solo tackles versus (laughs) assisted tackles. I'm like, I'm not sure this is going to be right, but we're just going to fucking go for this shit. Um, I love the stupid little... um, Stats that the defensive interceptions category keeps track of, like yards. Like, who gives a fuck? Oh my god! I who could, gives? A... I couldn't. How care about less with how ooh, many this is kind of funny? Turn it. How about how about twenty fourteen? Darrell Rivas two interceptions, zero yards. <laughs> that Good man on just him. yeah, take the interception and then just sit the fuck take down. You did yeah, your exactly. job. Honestly, what happens like... after that ain't your responsibility, buddy. Unless you're a very good punter, kick returner in your own right, don't try to return it. I've seen way too many guys fumble balls that they've intercepted or had that kind of scare. It's just like if you have open field, it's different. But just just go down. Give your team All the right, ball. Without, without looking, okay, eyes on me, right here, how many sacks do you think Darrell Reeves has? Ooh. In his career or, like, yearly His high, career. Career, career sacks. I'm going to go with, I thought five, but, like, even five sounds too high. So, I'm going to go with four. Two. <laughs> oh, jeez, Darrell. I mean, that's the kind of player he was. Yeah, he, he, he was <laughs> not a – honestly, I'm surprised the man had sacks. Plural. Right? Yeah. <sighs> 2008 and 2013. Do you think that's like one of the higher like differences between your first and second sacks of five no, years, essentially? Because get this, uh, out of just sheer happenstance, I have Champ Bailey's numbers up, and his first sack came in his rookie year, 1999. Guess when his second sack happened? Oh, God, like 2006? 2008. Oh, Jesus Guess when um, his third sack happened? 2013. 2010. He just. Oh my god. Just, well, yeah, just just two years later. Um. Yeah, he's also I'm really good. I'm actually gonna look this up. Champ Bailey's gonna be a uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't think he is yet. I don't think he's eligible yet. I think that's next. I year. I thought it was this year. I thought it was this year. I think he is eligible. Is it this, this year? year. Okay. I think so. Yeah, because it's been five seasons. He retired in 2013. Okay, that makes sense. Or I guess after the 2013 season, I concluded in 2014, I guess. So it's been five years, yeah. Yo, I'm really excited about my boy, Kevin Mawai. Why is that? Because he should make the Hall of Fame. 
I always thought it was pronounced Mawe. Yo, I don't even know. It, I don't think it matters because you know what? He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. I'm going to find out then. All right, I'm looking it up. Kevin Mawe. Mawai, whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, Hall of Fame doesn't have his stats up. Why would they? He's a center. I'm not sure they have stats. I mean, you could see how many sacks he gave up. I guess. <laughs> I right, actually have um, never looked at an offensive center's... Oh, my God. Do yourself a favor and look up his football reference page. All right, give me one There's second. not a lot on here. I, I can't imagine what would be on there. <laughs> Kevin Mawai. Oh, my God. Or Mawai. To be determined. It's just like when I in in college when um when I was in college and, and Jameis Winston popped out of the woodwork, and mm-hmm. I kept calling him Jamice, and Pete <laughs> Peter Pete kept telling me like like Josh it's pronounced Jameis and I would just refuse like for the, like his whole rookie season he was Jamice to nobody but me. Up until why is defense his stats last... the first thing coming up? This makes I have no, no idea. sense. So up until his probably last year in uh, New England, I called Jimmy Garoppolo Jimmy Garoppolo. This is true. I know I you remember that. that. I I, I, yeah. I do. Um. All right. So do you want to move on to this this gigantic page of NFL stats that I found? Uh, of individual stats. No. The uh, the the team stats. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Because we just did the individual stats. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man, I'm so good at just stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, first category we have in this one, so this is team stats, is uh, points for, uh, points scored by team. I'm assuming this is points scored by team against these defenses. I don't know why they said it was points for, but it is points against. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's uh, it's a little bit backwards. Anyway, what do we think? This is uh, this is the big one. Yeah, scoring defense. You know, I'd That's say there's going to be a lot of peripherals of that we say are important, but uh, points four is kind of the job <laughs> of the defense. So not letting it happen seems to be the ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean points four and uh, yards are kind of the two big ones. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, different types of defenses give up. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on what kind of defense you're running. Like a zone defense is going to give up a lot more yards, but it's able to lock down the red zone a lot better to keep you from scoring a lot of points. Whereas man coverage, you're not going to give up as many yards, hopefully, if you're running it correctly but you're not going to be able to clamp down in the red zone as well. And we yeah. love it when teams yeah. really clamp down. Oh, yeah, I love um, the clamp. Yeah, I, I'd say points for is kind of it, – it's not like the sexiest stat because there's it's just addition. <laughs> but uh, it, it it's it's the most it, – it's what the defense is out there to, to do, to not let teams do that. Um, So that's my number one, kind of. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think we could skip over. I mean, we talked about yards. I yeah, we, we, need we to did. talk about plays or yards per play. That stuff doesn't matter. I mean, I think yards per play is relatively interesting. I'm not sure it matters. That's a fun I mean, it, fan stat. Yeah, it doesn't affect the defense. Like, that's just how many yards you've given up divided by plays. Like, it's not anything fancy. It's not really something that you can't get from any other stat, or from yards at least. Yeah, and I'm trying to sit here and think if there's a real reason why, a, a real conclusion to be drawn from it, and I can't think of one. I, I like it because I think it's kind of fun, and I'm sure we've said that about some other football stats before I can't think oh, of, yeah. but I don't know why it's important. I don't think it is. Uh, takeaways. They're important, but it fluctuates a lot. I know back in the day when Grantland was still a website, 
um, they had some really tremendous articles. You could actually go back and look at their archive and uh, read some stuff. That's it's going to be out of date by now, but it talks a lot about, um, especially Bill Barnwell, his old stuff. He wrote a lot about the um, kind of like the thinking behind why we should value some things and not others, which is kind of what sparked my interest in this kind of stuff. But there's so much positive and negative regression each year with turnovers. It's kind of hard to look at it one year and say, hey, they did a really great job or no, they kind of stunk it up. It's a little more random as a team. Um, Yeah, I think if we're looking at turnovers by the offense versus turnovers from the defense, I'm going to – weight the negative value of the offense turning the ball over more than I will weight the positive mm-hmm. value of the defense receiving the ball via turnover. Um, they're, they're they're really important and change the entirety of the game. Um, as a stat, I'm not sure I care. I want my team to have them. I mean, like they, they're important to have for the game. Um, but like, if my team only let up something stupid low, like 200 points for the season and generated zero turnovers, I probably wouldn't give a shit. I feel like turnover margin is what people should care about when looking at it as a team perspective. I mean, as long as you have a positive turnover margin. Oh, you mean turnover differential? Yeah. I guess I've heard it both ways. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, God damn it, Josh. Guess how many takeaways the San Francisco 49ers had this year? Uh, the San Francisco, oh, they were, must have been really low. I would probably say like 10. Seven. Uh, that's really bad. Seven. That's really bad. Um, Chicago fumbles. Bears had 36. Yeah. Kit Bears. Eddie, Eddie Jackson and Kyle Fuller right there, baby. All right, we're gonna let's try to move through the rest of these a little bit quicker, just because you know I, mean, I don't want to like burn up too much time. We can skip away, time. skip through a lot of these, though. I was know? gonna say, like, I'm gonna just mention them and just ask yes, no for a couple of these fumbles lost by team. Nope. Yeah, I don't give a flying fuck on this. Uh, first downs. Yes, depending on man or zone coverage. <sighs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, passes completed. No. Passes attempted? No. God, no, with that one. It makes no sense. Yards gained by passing? Mm, I think sometimes. Yeah, Yeah. kind of, a little bit. Uh, Passing touchdowns? Mm, No. Kind of. Man, that's that's a hard one. Like, I don't want to value it too much just because a lot of times it's hard to really just – no, I do actually really think that's important. I I would as like a total, it, I'd say. I would like passing touchdowns more if they would differentiate um between within the red zone or outside of right. the red zone. Yeah, I think I agree that's with that. where I would like it. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I'm 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 with you. Uh interceptions I guess received instead of same thrown. as turnovers. Yep. Uh net yards gained per pass no. attempt. No. Yeah, I don't know why I would care. First downs for passing. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Rushing attempts. Nope. Nope. Rushing yards. Nope. I I, I say sometimes. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought never mind. That's okay. I just kind of glazed out of there. But um yeah, same same with passing yards. Yeah, I feel like we're going to say the same thing about most of these as we did just passing. Rushing yards per yeah. attempt. Um, a little bit more than passing yards per attempt, but not by much. I couldn't agree with that. First downs by rushing. No. No. Penalties. Penalties committed by Huge. the team and accepted. Yeah, that's a big one. That Huge. is free yards. Free. That's so bad. Don't do that. It it drives me nuts with how undisciplined some teams, <laughs> Steelers, uh, can be at times. Just it Jets. basically hands away games. I mean, the Steelers won a playoff game against the Bengals because of penalties. Like, the, there's no other way to put that. 
There's nothing like seeing your team, you know, like, ah, oh, they got two sacks. They have, like, you know, a handful of passes deflected or defend uh, defended. They've only let up, like, one touchdown mm-hmm. or two, two touchdowns, but they've got nine penalties for 115 yards. And it's, it's like— It's just so easily looked over by fans. It, oh, God, it's the worst because that, that there can become the game. Um, so then penalty yards— um, less so. I think... No, go ahead. Um, I th- think giving up free yardage in the first place is what you should care about. Penalty yards can be kind of up and down. I mean, you could give up one single... You could have five or six offsides or whatnot penalties that add up to, like, what, 50 yards or something. But you could have one pass interference call that's a 70 yard penalty um i mean racking up those yards is definitely bad but you kind of need some context with it you know i do i think the way i would put this is i i care more about this than i do um like yards given up total no, I care more. I'll put it this way: I'm going to go yards given up um, total, total yards given up by penalty, mm-hmm. and then and then yards given up by rushing, and then yards given up, and then tied with yards given up by passing. Yep, I'd agree with that. Because you're going to give up yards from passing, and you're going to give up yards from rushing. That's how the game works. But you don't have to be given up <laughs> penalties. No, that, that's that, why this that's next gonna, one is a big one. First downs given up through penalties, that's just a killer. That's a fucking killer. Uh, no matter how without you look looking, at it. without looking, who led, who led the league? The Raiders, maybe. No, uh, Raiders not even in the top ten. No. It was the Kansas the City Steelers. Chiefs. Wow, the Steelers at thirteen is wildly surprising, seeing as they led the league in penalties you know what's crazy to me though is kansas city chiefs leading the league with 43 That's and so then many. titans at uh first in the league with 18 that's, that's so many less that's crazy to me <sighs> wild all right this is an interesting one percent of drives ending in an offensive score what do you this think? is this is pretty big um, it's not one that you will ever see commentators or analysts talk about, but it's one of those things where you don't really notice it as much throughout the play of a game with turnovers and whatnot, but um, being able to consistently prevent scoring is huge. I mean, we talked about the importance of keeping scores down. We don't need to explain that, but being able to hold them to roughly like a third of the time scoring some sort of points is huge. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm surprised I haven't heard this in, in a broadcast before because mm-hmm. this seems, you know what I hate? I hate, uh, uh, this team is the worst team in second quarters this year. Oh, yeah. But you hear that shit every fucking broadcast. Like, they can't score in the first, but they're great in the second. Like, who gives uh, a it fuck? Does, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's like if they're winning games, like who gives a shit? I'd much rather hear this. I'd much rather hear this. This is so much more interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's not like the most important stat in the world, but at least there's more to be taken away from it. Uh, the next one, turnover percentage, kind of goes hand in hand with turnovers. It fluctuates yeah. so much. It's not that this big is of very a deal. Random. Uh. Th- yeah, I'm with you. I don't think it matters that much at all. I think it only matters if what you're looking at is turnovers. I guess that's the only context I could possibly imagine using this in. Mm-hmm. I can't. I don't know what I'm you'd you. use it out outside of that. Um, then expected points contributed by all defense. I don't know how they did this, and I'm not sure I care to dive into it right now. Basically, over the course of a season, it's expected turnovers and expected points off of those turnovers minus points you are expected to give up on like to an average team it's okay it's not a great stat it's 
basically most teams are going to be very much negative and teams like the bears who have like 36 turnovers was it are just going to have wildly outrageous high ones it's not a great stat to use it's kind of hard to judge yeah that's okay I, I don't care about it anyway um, I do have one more statistic that's not on here that I want to talk about, which is Pythagorean expectations, which was created by the late and great Bill James of Moneyball fan. He's not fame. dead. Is he really? He's very alive and lives in Boston. <laughs> Oops. He Rest goes, in peace, Wade Boggs. <laughs> he goes. He was just in the shit. He was just in shit uh, in the media like this year. Sorry, Wade Boggs. That's my bad. Yeah, he he got uh, uh he got into a Twitter shitstorm um because he said that players don't matter. What matters is the game and that if all players in the MLB Actually, it's funny because I've heard this conversation before. Right. I and and he's right? I'm not totally against it. Yeah. I mean, like, it's like, kind of like a shitty thing to say, like, hey, Let's imagine You're this. You're really great at baseball, but who gives a shit about you? No, no, no. It it's not sense. that. It, it, it's not that. It, it's that if you just – every single Major League Baseball player – not minor league baseball player, major league, MLB player died in the plane clash. And so everyone from AAA just moves out to, to, to the bigs. It's, it's still baseball. We'd still keep right. track of stats and, like – the players themselves are fun marketing tools but it's about the game and so he's kind of right he's also not right because individuals are super important in sports um but from like when... a really really cold perspective he was doesn't matter so continue with your bill james point who is alive <laughs> When you were talking about every MLB baseball player all dying in a plane crash, I was just imagining, like, a pile-up highway accident where, like, a plane flies into a mountain and there's just 31 other planes all following it in the same spot. Uh, imaginations are great. But anyway, so the Pythagorean expectations is a baseball term. Um, basically... If you score this many runs and you allow this many runs, this is how many wins you should get in a season. And then Bill Barnwell of Grantland uh, brought this over to football and was able to develop a basis of how many wins any team should get in a certain season. And it's not necessarily a defensive only statistic. Um, it's really just looking at your team as a whole. But everyone talks about how teams underperform or overperform, and that's just one way, one really effective way to look at a team and determine how much they under or overperformed. Yeah, uh, this was very useful, uh, at least in the last baseball season with the Mariners, because in the first half of the year they overperformed so much because it's they won, like I think I think they had the most one run wins in like the whole first half of the season last year and everyone was like and like they were um they were in the wild card like they were like um wild card two and it looked like a lock and then everyone said this is unsustainable and mariners fans were like no we're really gonna do it this year uh and then they fell apart <laughs> and blew like a 14 game lead to the a's and this is and everyone who was like Pythagorean record blah, 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 was like got to really rub their dicks in it because they were right. They you have such a way out, with words. Thanks, bud. They they <laughs> they outperformed their Pythagorean record. It, it's it's yeah. not like it's it's not like it's something you can you're gonna like put your hand on when you swear in and be like this is my Bible. But it's definitely useful for the under over and underperforming argument. Yeah, man. You got anything else to say about team defense or defensive statistics? Any you care about? Um, not not in particular. I I I'd like to see um time of possession from defense. In that, like, how yeah. long? How long? Uh, like, uh, maybe mm -hmm. length, time per drive, some shit like that. 
to see – or three and outs would have been nice. I don't know – why they kept track of three different kind of first downs, four different kinds of first downs, but didn't keep track of three and outs, I thought was kind of weird. It would actually be, be pretty cool. Yeah. Cause what I feel do like you, some of those are more? really more offensively focused, though. Like time of possession, three and outs, I feel like that's more of an offensive statistic, but I could definitely see the merit in tracking that for a defense. Yeah, again, yeah, exactly. I'm not saying that these would be like, oh, my God, like every defense is based on these things. But, like, as as long as we're keeping track of stats that seem kind of random, like rushing first downs, like why why not? Because, you know, like mm-hmm. if you're trotting your, your defense out there for, I mean, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes a game where you're clearly losing time of possession by a decent margin, well, that means your defense is going to be – well, on the field more. They're going to be risking getting tired and sluggish by the end of the game. You're going to be risking IR moves more because better chance players get hurt. Like, there's lasting implications I thought could have been gleaned. I'm a little bit surprised there's nothing for it. Um, but, I mean, I don't think they missed anything, like, enormous. There's anything enormous I want to see. No, I got nothing else. Uh, I, I thought, um, unless you had, do you have... So you have nothing else for 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 defense? Because I had uh, one more thing. Uh no, go ahead. So if you scroll down <laughs> on this page that we've been looking at, if you scroll right past <laughs> rushing and passing defense, which no one gives a fuck about because we talked about it already and how little we cared, um, kick and punt returns. I just want to give a brief shout out to special teams. Real brief. All you go for it. Um. I don't think this matters much, but at some point, at some point, we're going to talk about special teams. I'm sure it's like, going to come up. I feel like the only thing that matters to me is yards per return. Yeah, Um. so they have, they have well, games, which is stupid because it's a team stat and all teams have to play 16 games. Well, these so. are updated weekly and teams might have had their bye week yet. So go fuck yourself, Josh. Lick my butthole, Corwin. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, punts returned, I don't think matters uh, at all. No. Punts return, punt return yardage also does not matter. Yards per punt return, as Corwin said, I think has value. Uh, touchdowns mm-hmm. are fun. I don't think they matter much. Uh, kickoff returns don't matter. Kickoff returns, uh, yardage for kickoff returns does not matter. Kickoffs returned for a touchdown do not matter. Uh, yards per kickoff return matters. I would also, though, if I could uh, be president of football reference, pro football reference for a day, I would also add in average field position. I think would be interesting. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Um, yeah, I'd definitely like to see. I'm hesitant that'd to say be... where the ball was caught additionally, but I'd definitely like to see average field position. That would definitely be a good one for the brand. Shout out Pat McAfee. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I'd love to see it from both, both perspectives. I'd love to see it, how mm-hmm. f- deep pinning is your punter and how... Uh, far out on average is your returner doing his thing. Uh, but, I mean... I'm with you on that. Both small points. They have a second kick and punt return category here that's all scoring. Um, so it's all the field goal stats. I don't think I care too much about the field goal stats from uh, a a team perspective more than a play. I think that's just so player heavy. I don't know why you'd have a team kind of stat for it but it's there and uh, that's all I really have to say about it that's all I've got to say is about that yeah all right, I have one closing thought oh, you everyone have do a yourself a favor thought. I do oh. and it's not just wishing you a happy holiday sure quit listening to this podcast to the person who is listening open up YouTube Pull up the 2013 Outback Bowl. Jadavian Clowney's hit heard round the world. It's worth it. Right on. If you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can follow us at Juicing Pod. That's Juicing P O D. If you want to write into the show, it's Juicing the Numbers at gmail.com. If you want to check out our website, which will have uh, these episodes 
up, available to listen to, in addition to any of the notes or links that we use in this podcast. You can check it out at juicingthenumbers.wixsite.com slash website. That's juicingthenumbers.wixsite.com slash website. And, uh, yeah, feel free to give us a shout about stuff you care about that means something to you, that you have your heart and soul in, and we will promptly ignore it. In all honesty, if anyone actually ever writes into this show, I think we could probably devote an entire episode to whatever comment you have for us. Oh, for real? If you have fucking things to say, let us hear about it. We'll do a whole thing on it, man. (laughs) We'll bring you on the show, as long as you're not crazy. We're all about weird ideas, man. We're all for (laughs) it. But, uh, yeah, man, that's the show. I already said all the stuff. So, uh... Y'all have a nice day out there. Very much so alive. (laughs) Rest in peace, Wade Boggs.